She had learned that when sneaking out of a formal gathering early, it was best not to announce one's sneaking. Surreptitious was the way to go. She also knew that the best way to bypass the formal coat retrieval process, which called massive attention to the intended sneaking, was to secure one's own coat from the coat room via the connecting door to her father's study. Ninja indeed, Mallory thought. She then proceeded to make it safely and undetected into the oak-adorned office her father used on days he prepared cases from home. She could pick up faint traces of tobacco from the pipe he smoked when he was feeling extra thoughtful. In fact, that sweet aroma took her right back to childhood. She flipped on the light and moved quickly through the space, when, holy hell, there, against the bookshelves, stood her father and Janice, the receptionist from his office, sucking face. What's worse, the buttons of her blouse were undone, and his hand was snaking up the front of her skirt. Mallory closed her eyes to erase the image. But it hadn't worked. Because upon opening them, there they were. I apologize, Mallory said calmly, holding up a cautionary hand. I thought this room was empty. Her father and Janice stared at her, caught and clearly unprepared with any sort of explanation. But really, what could they say? She retreated from the study, but at her own pace, as she tried to process what the image actually meant. Her father was screwing his secretary. That's what that meant, right? And not only that, but he was doing so in their home, not a half hour after delivering a speech about how much he loved his wife. Mallory wasn't sure, but that seemed unthinkably low. She had a knot in the center of her chest, and strangely, she felt thirsty, like there was sandpaper lining her throat. Better get out of here first, find hope, leave the damn coat. But on second thought, no. She'd done nothing wrong, and she was not sacrificing her favorite black trench with the soft pockets in the midst of a rainstorm because her entire perception of her young life had been shattered with one flick of a light switch at the wrong moment. Correction, the right moment, because that flick had illuminated more than just the room. Henry, my coat, if you don't mind. Of course, Miss Spencer. And then quieter. Is everything all right? You look a little pale. She shrugged, swallowing the truth and feeling heavier for it. I'm fine, Henry, but thank you. But she didn't feel fine. Her face felt hot, her mind raced, and she wondered absently about what else in her life was a sham. The world felt wildly unsteady, and she placed a hand against the wall. Mallory? Are you okay? Hope asked, moving toward her. She nodded and presented her game face smile, the one she used for killer client presentations. She could present remarkable calm when called upon. Just waiting on my coat and we'll be on our way. Ninja skills failed. Something like that, she said with a serenity she did not feel. Hey, I think we're about to face some rain. Hope said, glancing out the picture window on the back wall. Angry raindrops pelted the glass, and an ominous clap of thunder shook the room, causing the guests to murmur. It was so ridiculously appropriate to the way she felt right now that Mallory almost laughed. But she was contending with another sound, the ticking clock in the back of her head, as it was only a matter of time before her father resurfaced and either A, played debonair party host and pretended none of it ever happened, or B, wanted to talk to her about what she'd just witnessed. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, there he was. Her coat hadn't been fast enough. Seriously, where was Henry? Her gaze moved to her father as he closed the door to the study a bright smile on his face as he shook hands with the first guest he came to. Option A it was. How exciting. 
she felt a little sick. Here you are, Miss Spencer, Henry said from behind her. If she ripped the coat from his hands and tossed a thank you, Henry, over her shoulder as she pulled Hope toward the elevator, it was only because urgency trumped manners in that particular moment. She would try and make it up to him later. He really was a good-hearted guy, if not the fastest with coat turnaround. You were anxious to get out of there, Hope said on the elevator as she studied her curiously. Mallory nodded, not really ready with words to explain away her actions, as the image of her father and his mistress played back in her head like some god-awful movie stuck on repeat. Hope seemed to accept this confirmation, and they rode the rest of the way in silence. But Hope stayed close to her, passing her little check-in glances that made her feel safe, looked after. On a night when she felt things falling from her control. She filed the fact away for examination later. But they were nice, the check-ins. You still up for that burger? Mallory asked as they exited the elevator. She needed a distraction in a big way. If you're coming with me, I'm up for anything. Mallory blinked against the words. Why are you being so nice to me? Hope smiled at what probably sounded like a weird question. But Mallory really needed to know. What did Hope see when she looked at Mallory? What was the draw? They had a physical attraction, sure, and maybe that was enough for Hope. But it would be nice to know. Because I happen to like you. I like you, too. When they reached the exit of the building, they were greeted with not just rain, but big wet drops that bounced into predominant puddles along the sidewalk. This was major rain, and for whatever reason, her parents' doorman was M.I.A., Hope turned to her. Stay here and be likable, and I'll get us a cab. Hope, wait. What is it? Hope asked, turning back just before stepping out into it all. You can't stand out there on the sidewalk in your beautiful dress. We can wait it out, see if it lets up. You don't know who you're dealing with here. Who said anything about standing? I'll have a cab in 2.3 seconds. It's kind of a gift. And without another word, she was out the door before Mallory could protest further. And Hope did hail a cab rather quickly. But it took only a few seconds before the storm soaked her through and through. Mallory, with heels in hand, then made the mad dash to the open door of the waiting cab and found herself laughing by the time she got inside. How was that possible? after what had transpired that evening? But she knew the answer. Something about hope whisked her away from the world. Perhaps it was how different she was from most of her friends and family. Whatever the case, she was a valuable escape on a night like this one. And that was so what she needed right now. To forget what she'd just seen, and to push the real world far, far away before it crushed her. Mallory was known for her strength, but she was feeling anything but strong. She turned her face against the back seat of the cab and studied Hope. Concentrate on Hope, she told herself. Don't think about the rest. Hope pulled her hair out of the knot at the base of her neck, and Mallory watched the release as it fell freely around her shoulders, wet from the storm. Sensual. That was the word for it. The skin across Hope's chest glistened with droplets, and the black dress clung to her in a whole new way. So what happened to 2.3 seconds? Mallory asked, gesturing with her head to Hope's condition. Flag on the play. We had storm interference. I don't think you can flag a conversation, Mallory said and raised an eyebrow. Yes, you can, Hope said in confidence. Just did, in fact. You're kind of cheeky. Cheeky? You sound like Mary Poppins. A very attractive Mary Poppins, though. So bonus. 
No one has ever made that comparison before, she mused. Well, have you ever called them cheeky? Try it. See what you get. The smile dimmed on Hope's face. So, are you going to tell me what happened back there? I already know something did, so don't try to downplay it. Discussion was not part of the plan. If it's okay with you, I'd rather not. Let's talk about something else. Like? How your failure at cab hailing has yielded other rewards? She let her gaze travel from Hope's eyes to her lips, down the line of her slender neck to the dip in her dress. Mallory's body tightened uncomfortably as a consequence, and she adjusted in her seat out of necessity. Then and there, Mallory made an executive decision and met Hope's eyes. I can do without the cheeseburger, if you can. Yep, this was exactly the kind of distraction she needed. She watched as understanding crossed Hope's face, and her lips parted subtly. It was all Mallory needed. She leaned forward to the cab driver and changed their course. Her place it was. She was in control of her own destiny. And it felt good. Chapter 11 While Hope still wasn't sure what had gone on earlier in the evening to spark a change in Mallory, it was clear now that she was on a mission. It was a sexy mission, which was one of the better kinds. But it did leave her curious. Mallory hadn't said much since they exited the cab, and when they arrived at the apartment, her lips were on Hope's before she even had the door open, stripping her of most of her capacity to think clearly. Hope had to admit, the wet clothes added a certain something, as the red dress Mallory wore was now a shade deeper, and her semi-wet hair framed her face in an intoxicating halo under the sconce light in the hallway. But it was her mouth that had Hope's attention all hot and insistent in the best way possible. Mallory pulled away, but only to open the damn door that seemed to be in the way of everything good Hope could imagine. And she wasn't feeling very patient. They stumbled into the darkened apartment, finding each other easily, and meeting in a sexy exchange of lips, tongues, and touches, both light and firm. Should we turn on a light? Hope asked between kisses. No light, Mallory said easily. Moonlight crisscrossed the loft's living room and illuminated the path that Mallory led them down to her bedroom, tugging Hope gently by the hand. The room was beautiful from what she could see of it. The high ceilings of the living room extended into the bedroom, Mallory's bed faced an expanse of unobstructed windows that invited the twinkling lights of the city to dance in front of them now. But the view a little closer to her was better. She cupped Mallory's face with her hands. God, she was beautiful. Are you sure? Hope asked. Her answer was a searing kiss that had Hope forgetting the question and yearning for contact as her heart rate escalated and her arousal skyrocketed. Now. She needed more. Now. As Mallory kissed her into oblivion, she slipped a hand behind Hope and lowered the zipper to her dress. It fell to the floor, and with an intake of air, Mallory's eyes roamed her body. She hadn't worn a bra, and Mallory let out a little gasp at the sight. Mallory's lips parted, and she trailed a hand from Hope's shoulder down across her breast to her stomach and inside the curve of her thigh, nearly bringing Hope to her knees. Hope couldn't contain the murmur of pleasure that escaped her lips. Hope, Mallory whispered, stepping into her space and kissing her neck slowly, skillfully. 
Mallory did everything well, Hope noted peripherally, and seduction seemed to be no exception. She eased Hope backward until the back of her knees brushed the bed, before lowering her down entirely. From where she lay on the bed, Hope looked up at Mallory as the red dress came off, followed by the strapless bra, revealing the perfectly full breasts she longed to touch again. When Mallory lowered herself on top, skin on skin, Hope thought she'd come undone. She pushed up against Mallory and trailed her hands down Mallory's bare back, enjoying the warmth of her smooth skin. They were moving together already, legs intertwined, as there was no way not to be. Mallory was lost in the most wonderful sense. She kissed down Hope's body, amazed at how soft she was, how wonderful she felt beneath her. Mallory was fully in control of the moment, and that's exactly how she needed it to be tonight. Driven by need, she was shocked at how quickly her body responded to Hope who was easily the sexiest human she'd ever come in contact with. Hope attempted to reverse their positions, but Mallory had a goal, and had yet to achieve it. She eased off Hope and ran her fingers up Hope's inner thighs and lightly across the cotton of her panties, between them, eliciting a moan, a hotly erotic sound that Mallory wanted more of. She refocused on her breasts, kissing licking, sucking, pulling a nipple fully into her mouth and letting her tongue play. She could do this for hours, she realized, moving on to the next breast. She was aware of hope straining against her, knew how wet she was. But Mallory wasn't ready yet. Hope whimpered quietly, seeking some sort of release. But Mallory pressed on, tasting, caressing, pushing, and licking. What do you need? She finally whispered in Hope's ear as she continued to massage her breasts and circle her thumb around each nipple. You, she managed, her hips moving against Mallory's thigh in a rhythm that told Mallory she wouldn't last much longer. Soon, Mallory assured her and stole a scorching open-mouthed kiss because it was too tempting to pass up. She spent some time on the slender column of Hope's neck, and found it a very sensitive spot for her, as it pulled another moan from Hope's lips that only encouraged Mallory further. Hope couldn't believe the need she experienced. The attention from Mallory was beyond torturous, and she was about to ignite under her thorough touch. The buildup had been nice, but now she craved release in a way she'd never quite known. She was shaking for Mallory, unequipped to handle much more of the throbbing. Mallory kissed down her stomach, pausing at the waistband to her underwear before sliding them down her legs. Good God, the anticipation was excruciating. Mallory parted her thighs gently and placed an open-mouthed kiss on one inner thigh and then the next. Please, Hope managed moving her head against the down comforter as the aching became insistent. Mallory, please. Finally ready to comply, Mallory swiped across Hope's center with her tongue, the sensation nearly levitating her off the bed. But Mallory held her in place and continued to explore, applying little bits of pressure to where Hope needed it most before pulling it back. It was diabolical the things Mallory was doing with her mouth, but in the most wonderful way. Liquid heat moved through her veins, and she slid her hands into Mallory's hair, still moving against her mouth. Mallory gave her what she wanted, but she did so on her own schedule. When she pushed inside, Hope saw white. Mallory filled her expertly before retreating and entering her again. Her body, already on fire, erupted. Need tore Hope apart as the pressure rose steadily, climbing higher and higher with each flick of Mallory's tongue, until a powerful release shot through her with a shattering intensity. 
but Mallory didn't stop and sent her further into a sweet oblivion before bringing her down slowly, gently. God, I loved every second of that, Mallory said, planting a soft kiss on the underside of her jaw and stretching out next to Hope. But all Hope could do was stare, still not fully a part of the here and now. She knew Mallory came with a certain quiet drive about her, but this experience had gone above and beyond. Overachiever? Yeah, she'd agree. What did you just do to me? Hope asked, turning onto her side to better see Mallory, who brushed a strand of hair from Hope's forehead. I think I just had my way with you, Mallory said in satisfaction. Is that what you call it? Because I have a few other choice words. Mallory's mouth formed a tiny outraged circle, and her eyes went wide. Language, Miss Sanders. It was clear she was teasing, but it was the cute kind. Hope raised an eyebrow. After what you just did to me, I don't think you have a lot of room to talk about manners and decorum. Mallory bit the inside of her cheek as she considered this point. I did make you wait a bit, didn't I? Hope stole a lingering kiss. You think? Couldn't help it. I was busy, Mallory said sweetly, as Hope moved on top of her. I think I'm going to make you a drink. Do you have simple syrup? Wait, you're going to make me a drink? That's what I said. I make great drinks. I've heard this, but we're kind of otherwise engaged. What? Did you want me to do something else right now? She asked, tracing the outside of Mallory's breast and watching as her eyes widened and her lips parted at the contact. Mallory's eyes fluttered closed, and she bit her lip. You're a tease, and you know it. What? Hope asked, feigning shock. Never. Is that a no on the simple syrup? She got out of bed then, which prompted a sigh from Mallory at the loss. Hope moved naked about the room, looking for something to put on that wasn't a wet cocktail dress. Mallory watched her movements with a lazy smile. That's a no on the simple syrup. If you're looking for clothes, that's a shame, because I'm enjoying this visual. But you'll find a robe on the back of the door, Mallory said. Hope slipped into Mallory's blue robe, loving that it smelled amazing, like the hair she'd just nuzzled. I've never seen anyone wear my robe before. I like you in it. I'm thinking it may look better on you than it does on me. I completely disagree with that statement, Hope said resisting the very powerful urge to skip the drink and take what she really wanted. Mallory, lying there nearly naked and looking sexy as hell, was a temptation she was hard-pressed to resist. But there'd be time, she told herself. Plenty of time, and good things come to those who wait. You coming? she asked Mallory before heading out to the kitchen. I can't believe this is happening, Mallory said in amusement. Hope opened the fridge and surveyed what she had to work with. It didn't really matter. Give her some booze and she could make a drink out of anything. But it turned out she was in luck. This is great news. What's great news? Mallory asked, emerging from the bedroom. You have fresh mint. No one ever has but the words died on her lips because Mallory wore a t-shirt that said, Game Over, that came just to the tops of her thighs. She looked appetizing, and if Hope's lust meter had already been pushed over the top, it might have just busted altogether at the amount of skin on display. Plus, Mallory had the most awesome legs, olive-toned and smooth. Hope wanted to run her hands across each and every inch of their length. You forget what you were saying? 
Mallory asked and slid up and onto the counter. No, I just... She covered her left eye with her hand, giving up. You know how to work a t-shirt. Mallory smiled. You noticed. This plan is beginning to backfire. It better not. I want that drink you promised. I happen to be very thirsty. Hope closed her eyes and cursed herself. Fine. Even though I'm now the stupidest woman alive, fine. Right. Drink coming up. A very fast drink. Well, I'm really more of a sipper. Mallory pointed out. Hope met her eyes and shook her head. This whole thing was her fault. Do you have a pestle and a bowl? This is sounding fancy. It really isn't. Mallory pointed to a lower cabinet, and Hope found what she needed and went to work crushing a few mint leaves, while Mallory looked on. When did you first know you were good at it? Making drinks, crafting cocktails. Well, I wasn't always, she told Mallory. I sucked at bartending for about the first two years. Then I met Thompson. That was his last name, but it's what everyone called him. He owned this little hole-in-the-wall place on 7th that was packed every night. It was because the guy knew what he was doing when it came to making good drinks. The decor didn't matter. I was hired on as a waitress initially, but paid attention to everything he did. Watched his techniques, memorized his recipes, and learned how much the little things mattered. Glass temperature, sugar balance, and how a less than precise pour can ruin the whole drink. When he caught on how interested I was, he opened up quite a bit, took me under his wing. Over time, I became kinda popular behind the bar myself. Oh, I bet, Mallory said. I've seen it firsthand. Hope chuckled. And what about the business side of things? How did you go from behind the bar to owning it? Now that took a lot of time. A decade. Hope poured some sugar and water in a pan and heated it. As Mallory didn't have simple syrup, she'd make some herself. I pretty much read every book I could get my hands on that talked about restaurant management, business ownership, and entrepreneurship. Talked to a lot of folks who'd done it before me and learned the pitfalls to watch out for. The rest was just about saving enough cash. Wow, that's impressive. You're impressive. Hope measured the rum against the lime juice she'd squeezed. Speaking of impressive, try this, she said, topping her masterpiece with a couple of mint leaves. She carried the glass over to Mallory and held on to one for herself. To drinks in thunderstorms, Mallory said, touching Hope's glass with hers. And to beautiful women on countertops, Hope added. You know, I'm never going to get this image out of my head. Is that such a bad thing? Mallory asked. Wow, this is good. A mojito, Hope informed her. Lusting after you? No, it's not bad. And it certainly wouldn't be a new thing. I remember the first time you sent me a drink. I thought it was super cliche. Hope grabbed her heart as if wounded. I cannot believe you just said that. I was nervous doing that, and I never get nervous. Mallory seemed to soften. That's actually very sweet. And now I feel horribly guilty. Come here so I can kiss you. Hope moved until she stood in front of the counter and settled in between Mallory's legs. She leaned in and kissed Mallory slowly thoroughly. As they kissed, she placed her hands on Mallory's thighs and inched upward until she heard Mallory's breath hitch, and she broke the kiss. Her breathing ragged and her lips swollen, Mallory pointed at her beverage on the counter next to her. 
Not finished yet, she said. We can come back for the drink later, she said, kissing Mallory's neck. It's too refreshing to leave behind. Mallory sipped from the glass. And though I am playing a little hard to get, I really like this drink and have to finish it. Okay, fine, Hope said with a sigh. She slid up onto the counter across from Mallory. Did you play sports as a kid? Mallory smiled. I did. Varsity tennis. I was all state. Wow. Remind me not to play you. Let me guess, student council? Mallory pointed at her face. President. Hope laughed. I'm gonna guess summa cum laude. And valedictorian. Seriously? At the question, Mallory passed her a look, which prompted Hope to laugh and hold up her hands. Sorry, of course you were valedictorian. I don't know what I was thinking. Mallory took another sip from her glass and Hope did the same. What were you like in school? Mallory asked. I was a decent student, on the honor roll here and there. Though I didn't do a lot in the way of extracurricular activities. That required transportation, and there wasn't a lot of that. What about your mom? Worked nights, so we were mainly on our own after school. She tried, but there were bills to pay. Mallory nodded. I can't imagine what that must be like. I'm happy you didn't have to. Your parents seem great, by the way. At the comment, Mallory glanced at her drink a distant look now present behind her eyes. I was lucky. And then refocused the attention back on Hope with an upshift in energy. When did you stop dating boys? You're changing the subject, Hope said. That's totally allowed. God, she was cute, and way too far away. But Hope pressed on. I never started. Hope said. Mallory inclined her head. Seriously? You just always knew? Hope shrugged. I don't know about always, but I knew enough to never date a guy. You? Buddy Lachlan was my boyfriend until late in my junior year of high school. Hope enjoyed the look of disdain on Mallory's face. And how did that go? Shockingly, not well. Our parents were best friends. It was this match made in heaven that simply wasn't. Mallory, yes? Did you break little buddy's heart? Mallory laughed. I'm afraid so. He still won't look me straight in the eye. It's all very awkward. He was at the party tonight. Hold the phone. And you didn't point him out to me? That would have been kind of awkward. Yeah, well, I'm kind of into awkward. Do you know what a loss I'm experiencing right now? Do you? I can't even imagine. Hope placed a hand over her heart. And the only thing that could possibly remedy this oversight is if you found a way to make it up to me. Hope eased off the counter and reclaimed her spot in front of Mallory, who eyed her progress in amusement. And how could I do that, do you think? Well, I'll need to be kissed, Hope said, and moved in closer. As Mallory's eyes met hers, they darkened with heat. She set her nearly empty glass on the counter and took Hope's face in her hands slowly, purposefully. She leaned down and brushed Hope's lips before deepening the kiss. And that ever-present magnet that seemed to exist between them snapped to attention, as Hope couldn't keep her hands off Mallory. She slid them up the warm skin of Mallory's legs to her upper thighs, taking note of the hitch in Mallory's breath at the intimacy of the touch. She pushed her tongue into Mallory's mouth and enjoyed the taste of alcohol and lime. 
all the while inching her hands higher until her thumbs met the apex of Mallory's thighs, which pulled a quiet gasp. The damn t-shirt, which had looked so good on Mallory earlier, was now in her way, but she wasn't ready to be done with it quite yet. Her hands were on the move, and she was enjoying every intoxicating second of it. And that was how Mallory made her feel, intoxicated with desire, with a need for her. The need was out in full force tonight. Her body was infused with hot arousal as she settled on Mallory's breasts, full and amazing in her hands. Yeah, no more t-shirt. She pulled her mouth from Mallory's and lifted the offending shirt over her head to reveal the perfection beneath. As she stared at Mallory on display for her, now in nothing but her panties, she swore quietly reverently, because she was that beautiful. It had been a long time since she'd felt anything remotely close to what Mallory was able to elicit in her, and scary as it was, she wanted more. She lowered her head to Mallory's breast and pulled a nipple into her mouth, moving her tongue across it once, twice, and a third time before skating her teeth across its surface as Mallory clung to her. She repeated the process and moved on to the other breast. Hope, Mallory breathed, seeming to search for purchase. Her hips moved subtly, signaling her need. With her hands on Mallory's ass, she drew her closer. As the robe Hope wore had come untied, she could feel Mallory's panties, damp against her bare thigh. She closed her eyes to steel herself against the pulsing intensity that moved through her. It would have been nice to go slow. It really would have. But in this moment, Hope couldn't remember the logic behind that mentality. Because Mallory made her forget everything, including her own name. All she knew was that she needed this. Now. She made quick work of the panties, and with Mallory already ready for her, she slid her fingers inside, prompting Mallory to throw her head back and whimper quietly, a sound Hope would never forget. It wouldn't take much. She could already tell. The warmth that enveloped her as she pushed into Mallory had her closing her eyes and reveling. Only not for long, because she wanted to watch Mallory when she came to experience all of it. She wrapped one arm around Mallory's waist to steady her as she moved in and out of her with her other hand, gaining speed to match the thrusts of Mallory's hips. Just as it seemed she was close, Hope pressed a purposeful thumb to Mallory's center and watched in awe as she called out and tossed her head back, clenching Hope's hand, moving wildly in a gorgeous display against it. Hope leaned into Mallory and kissed her neck as she moved her hand slower and slower still, easing her back down again. Mallory visually traced the texture of the ceiling, and she scrambled to return to herself. Her world had just been rocked, she knew that much, and she took a moment to figure out the rest. She was on the kitchen counter with Hope still inside her, of that much she was aware and the pleasure that still moved through her was staggering. This had been hot. They were together. She wrapped her arms around Hope's neck and kissed her. You are so sexy, Hope said between kisses. Yeah? Mallory asked, because I'm not even sure what that word means after what you just did to me. On my counter, no less. You don't like the counter? Hope asked, those sky blue eyes dancing with amusement. I love the counter now, Mallory said, slipping her hands into Hope's robe. Her robe. Is that what you do with all the girls? Get them onto countertops and then have your way with them? I've never done this with anyone, Hope said, meeting her eyes. And Mallory knew it was true. The knowledge resonated, 
and her chest experienced a rush of emotion in a manner she hadn't expected. Whoa, where did that come from? Before she could marinate further, Hope scooped her into her arms and carried her toward the bedroom. We're going back to bed? Mallory asked. Why, yes, yes we are. But they didn't do a lot of sleeping. In fact, sleep took a definite backseat that night to other tempting activities between the sheets, as they explored each other into the wee hours of the morning. Mallory, her head tucked into Hope's shoulder, lay there sated, exhausted, and contemplative. She stole a glance at the clock. It was after three. She only stayed up that late for work. Hope smoothed her hair, and Mallory smiled up at her. What are you thinking about? Hope asked, then placed a kiss on her temple. I found out tonight that my father is screwing his secretary. Silence reigned. Hope eased to the side to better face Mallory. I'm sorry, what? Mallory shook her head. When I went to get my coat, I saw them, together in his study, just after he made an eloquent anniversary toast to my mother in front of the world. Mallory, I'm so sorry. Why didn't you say something? What do you say when the person you look up to the most is not at all who you thought they were? And while the whole thing is horrific and something I'll probably have to process later, you made it better just by being here. This should have ranked as one of the worst nights in my life, and it would have, if not for you. Hope slid down the bed until she lay face to face with Mallory. She touched her cheek. Well, there was nowhere else I wanted to be. Mallory smiled and kissed her, this woman who was so much more than she'd ever given her credit for. She'd walked into this thing between them begrudgingly, blaming the overt physical attraction she had for Hope for their kissing sessions early on. But maybe it wasn't just physical, she thought, as a wash of genuine feeling moved through her. The concept was a little too terrifying to examine in that moment. So she sidelined it in favor of the spark that kiss ignited. It seemed she didn't tire easily of hope. Are you going to talk to him about it? Your father? Mallory eased herself on top and inserted her thigh between Hope's legs. I don't really want to talk about him anymore, she said and lost herself to the feel of the woman beneath her. Their coming together was much more leisurely this time around, but no less intense. They were more familiar with each other now, but the magnetism didn't dwindle. When she brought Hope to climax with her mouth, she was near the brink herself and gave herself over to Hope's skillful touch moments later. Afterward, Hope held her for a long time and Mallory reveled in it, enjoying the night, clinging to it, and afraid of what the harsh light of morning would bring. So it's official, you guys are a thing? Brooklyn asked from the treadmill next to Mallory's. They ran together a couple of mornings a week in front of the giant picture window at the fitness club down the street from the loft. Running kept Mallory's head focused and in the game. As she pushed her body, she stared out at the bustling city below as the stress eased off her with each stride. Their morning runs were also her chance to check in with Brooklyn, their one-on-one -on -one time, which she'd come to value quite a lot. I don't know if I'd go that far, Brooks, but I like her, a lot. But you're officially dating. Mallory considered the question. It kind of feels that way but we haven't discussed it formally. It's a little gray, if I'm being honest. Does that mean sex was had? Mallory opened her mouth to answer and closed it, not sure how much she wanted to say. It didn't matter, though, as Brooklyn saw right through her. Oh, my word, it has. 
That's why you're all loose and smiley. You got laid properly. It was properly, wasn't it? God, yes, Mallory said, then passed Brooklyn a follow-up look for emphasis. Brooklyn sent one hand into the air and let out a cheer, which garnered several curious stares from nearby runners. She turned to the onlookers and informed them politely, Mallory Spencer has re-entered the dating world, hence the cheering. She turned back to Mallory. I should take out a press release, as this is kinda hot news. What you should do is lower your voice and stop bothering the other runners. But it was kind of fun, the high she was on from her time with Hope. She reminded herself to remain cautious and in control, however. That was key. Impossible, Brooklyn said. I'm excited. I have to be free to express my emotions, Mallory. In fact, I'm so keyed up now that I'm ready to make this run my bitch. Brooklyn turned the dial on the treadmill, and Mallory heard it whir in response to the acceleration. Never one to be outdone, she followed suit, matching Brooklyn's stride for stride. Though her calves screamed and her shoulders pulled, Mallory welcomed the workout and relied on it to clear her head, as there was a lot going on in there. In addition to wrapping her mind around the really awesome night with Hope, she'd yet to fully examine the events at her parents' anniversary party, nor had she mentioned it to anyone but Hope. But the memory stung acutely, even now. She'd have to talk to him eventually, her dad. The city was too small not to, and come on, this was her father she was talking about, which is what made the whole thing so surreal. The guy she turned to for everything. But the anger that flashed alongside the memory reminded her how upside down the world felt of late, for both the good and the bad. It was a little jarring and one of the reasons Mallory hated roller coasters. They brought chaos. So, did she stay over? Mallory distantly heard Brooklyn ask. She forced herself to rejoin the conversation. Stay over? At your place, I just assume it was your place. Was it her place? I'll need the sexy details, please. How about just some basics? Only if they're sexy basics. Fine, my place. She stayed over but left early. She had some sort of delivery at show place. Was there a goodbye kiss? Mallory smiled. There was a good one. Brooklyn shook her head as she ran. I cannot believe you landed hot bartender. Do you know how many of those girls at show place would kill to be you? Yeah, well, don't get ahead of yourself. It was one night. They ran on. One really sexy night, Mallory amended with a grin. Tuesday at Showplace had hope in her groove. She sashayed subtly with the music, moving her hips to the beat as she topped off a tray of ginger snap smashes with a couple of mint leaves and slid the tray to Sophie. Here's your order for table 12. The special they'd run for the smash had exceeded all of Hope's expectations. To say they were a hit was an understatement. She checked her reserve stock of smash ingredients and figured she could make it through the night if the demand held steady and didn't escalate. She mixed a rum and coke and slid the drink across the bar to its owner, then turned her attention to the next customer. What can I get you? She asked glancing up. She relaxed into a smile when her eyes landed on Mallory's. Hi, random customer, she said and placed a square napkin in front of Mallory. And what can I make you? Mallory slid onto a bar stool and looked pensive. Well, bartender, I think I'll try one of those ginger snap smashes the world is raving about. I think I can make this happen for you, she said purposefully overdoing her tried-and-true cool bartender voice. Excellent. 
How was your day today, ma'am? Hope asked. Mallory smiled at the formal role play. Oh, you know, busy. I'm feeling a little tense. Hope measured the whiskey into the shaker. You probably need to have that tended to. Mallory looked wistfully skyward. If only I knew someone with good hands. Hope let her jaw fall open and pointed to herself. Oh my God, I just thought of someone. Mallory joined her in amazement, shaking her head. My luck continues. Hope poured the contents of the shaker into a cocktail glass, garnished with a squeeze of lemon and some mint leaves, and placed it, presentation style, in front of Mallory. So, hi, she said in all seriousness, meeting Mallory's gaze. Hi, Mallory said back shyly, which was so unexpected her stomach did a series of hardcore flip-flops. Mallory was never shy. She didn't even know that was a possibility. And while she wanted to stare into those fathomless blue eyes for a few dedicated moments, the girl two stools down from Mallory had her hand up. Horrible timing, as she didn't want to move. What can I get for you? She asked the blonde girl with the ponytail and placed a napkin in front of her. What do you recommend? She asked and tossed in an extra bat of her eyes. Classic. Hope sent her an easy smile. We're running a special on the Ginger Snap Smash. It's a craft cocktail. I think you'll like it. We'll take two, she said, inclining her head to her smiley friend. Got it, Hope said and snagged two glasses. She went about making the drinks, but she felt Mallory's eyes on her, which made her hyper aware of the way her body responded. Heat prickled the back of her neck and all she wanted to do was take Mallory by the hand and find a quiet spot to hear about her day, and maybe follow through with that promise of a massage, which could totally lead to more. She was never one for ruling out more. Your movements are so precise, Mallory said, as she stirred her drink with her cocktail straw. It's like a perfectly choreographed dance. Do you ever spill anything? Hope smiled as she shook the drinks in the shaker. Spilling is for amateurs, Park Avenue. She tossed the short glass into the air, where it spiraled before returning neatly to her hand, just in time for her to pour the contents of the shaker. Okay, now you're showing off, Mallory said. She was right. But for Hope, showing off was part of the fun. She opened her mouth to answer Mallory, but was stopped short by their youthful neighbors. My friend here would love to know your name, Blonde Ponytail said, interrupting Hope's flow. She looked to the smiling brunette, who tossed her hair on cue. It's Hope. Cool, I'm Lisa, the brunette said over the music, and then pointed to the blonde. This is Cammie. Nice to meet you guys. She placed a drink in front of each of them, and held up the credit card Cammie had supplied. Shall I close it out? No, Cammie said, sipping her drink, her eyes still on Hope. Let's keep it open. Hope passed Mallory a subtle look of apology. So, have you worked here long? Sigh. She saw where this was going and turned back to Cammie. Normally, she'd indulge a customer like this show them a little of the attention they seemed to want before moving on to her next order. But she'd been thinking about Mallory much of the day, and here she was, just feet away. All she wanted was a little one-on-one -on -one time with her. Instead, she forced herself to answer the question as pleasantly as she could muster. About a year and a half. Well, you're really good at your job, Lisa said. Cammy sent Lisa a more than obvious look of encouragement, and Lisa nodded. So, what's your story, Hope? Hope inclined her head slightly. My story? She wants to know if you're single, Cammy clarified. 
Because have you seen yourself? Lisa added, laughing. Mallory had never really thought of herself as the jealous type, but watching these young girls stare adoringly at Hope definitely had her focused attention. Am I single? Hope asked, drawing out the final word. Hmm, that's an excellent question, Lisa. The jury still seems to be out on that one. Is it that complicated? Lisa asked. Hope met Mallory's eyes and smiled. We should ask my friend, Hope said and turned to Mallory quite pointedly. Mallory, would you say my love life is complicated? Mallory blew out a breath and looked skyward, wondering how to navigate this very loaded question. She could say yes and keep the mystery alive, because wasn't mystery part of the allure in life? Mallory certainly enjoyed it. But you know what? Why not just go for it? Walk out on a limb and see where it got her. I don't think it has to be. Hope nodded in an overly serious manner. You're very astute. It doesn't have to be complicated. Exactly. And in that case, she said, turning to Lisa, I am involved with someone. It came on kind of suddenly, as in moments ago. Mallory would be lying if she said the comment didn't give her a little thrill. She enjoyed the wide-eyed nod the girls gave Hope before slowly turning to Mallory as understanding struck. For lack of anything better to do, she waved at them. And in a kind of perfect moment, they waved back. Hope leaned across the bar once the girls reluctantly took off. That might have been one of my favorite exchanges in life. Yeah? Mallory asked. Well, she said, her eyes darkening. One of. Mallory's stomach tightened at the implied memory. You cannot say really sexy things to me when I'm here to talk business with you. I didn't say anything sexy. You suggested sexy things and you know it. Suggesting sexy things is totally not against any rules I've ever lived by. Mallory didn't know what to say to that. I guess that's true. Hope straightened. You sure like to be in charge and make all the rules. Yeah, well, it's kind of my thing. Oh, I know. You want to go to my office, Miss Rulemaker, and have a work-related conversation? Yes, I wanted to touch base with you about some graphics for next week and a proposition from Big Top. Hope raised a very sensual eyebrow. I'm interested. Great. But this is business, nothing sexy, Hope said. Got it. But just as Mallory rose from her stool, something caught Hope's attention just behind her. Mallory turned and found herself in the most surreal position, staring at a girl who looked identical to Hope. She glanced back at the real Hope to be sure her eyes weren't playing tricks on her. But nope, there she was. The twin sister she reminded herself. Only they were in the same room this time, making the whole thing extra trippy. There were key differences, however. She could see that much now. The sister had shorter hair and a small mole to the left of her eye, which showed the remnants of a bruise. She also looked older somehow, if that was even possible. But beneath it all, the same vibrant blue eyes looked back at Mallory now. Genetics was an amazing thing. Hey, you two. Wasn't expecting to see you guys, Hope said. That's when Mallory registered the middle-aged man standing next to Hope's sister, holding her hand rather sweetly. I was wondering if you had a minute, her sister said. Hope glanced at Mallory and back at her sister. Understanding the dilemma, Mallory jumped in. No, Hope, it's perfectly fine. You and I can finish up another time. Are you sure? You don't have to go anywhere, 
Kara said to Mallory. This should only take a minute. Then Hope seemed to remember herself. Oh, sorry, Kara. This is Mallory, Mallory Kara. Kara passed a look between the two of them and raised a knowing eyebrow at Hope, who sighed. Yes, we've been seeing each other. What so? Kara said with a smile. I can still read you like a book. Then, turning to Mallory, twin thing. Kara was certainly much nicer than the first time Mallory had encountered her. Looked a lot more pulled together, too. Perhaps the guy she was with was part of that. Mallory smiled. It's nice to meet you, Kara. You too. Kara took a minute to introduce Elliot, and after some pleasantries, Hope interrupted. Kara, what's going on? Everything okay? She looked more nervous than Mallory had ever seen her, and signaled Teddy to take over the bar. Before you say anything, hear me out, Kara said, palms facing out. Okay, Hope said. But please get to it, as you're freaking me the hell out. Without a word, Kara produced her left hand, and the modest diamond ring told the story for her. Hope stepped forward and looked from the ring to her sister's expectant face. You're engaged? Kara was teary-eyed when she nodded, and Mallory somehow knew this was the real deal for her. She didn't know this woman at all, but love was hard to fake. Elliot turned to Hope in earnest. I know you must be thinking this happened kind of fast, and it did. But I love your sister with all my heart, and I will do right by her. And this is what you want, she asked Kara. More than I've ever wanted anything. Mallory saw the edges of Hope's mouth tug before she broke into a full-on smile. Then I'm happy for you. Thank you. Kara moved into Hope's arms, and the sisters hugged in a sentimental display that brought a lump to Mallory's throat. The tears brimming in Hope's eyes were new to Mallory, as the love she clearly had for her sister was evident. Who knew Hope was such a softy? So will you guys get a place together? Hope asked the happy couple. Elliot and Kara exchanged a look. That's the second part of the news, Kara said. Elliot has asked me to move back to Iowa with him. We're leaving tomorrow. Hope took a minute. I'm sorry, did you say tomorrow? Kara glanced nervously at Elliot. Things with Dominic are heating up, and it's best I get out of town. Hope nodded resolutely. I get it. I just wish you didn't have to go. Mallory frowned, wondering about Dominic and what kind of trouble this guy was bringing to Kara's life. Did that faded bruise around her eye have anything to do with it? It's not just Dominic, Kara said. There's a time to come to New York and a time to leave. I've been here my whole life, and what has it got me? She glanced up at Elliot and smiled. I'm ready to start a new chapter. We've already found a rental house online, and it has the cutest little yellow door. I can waitress, and Elliot's thinking about opening a restaurant of his own down the line. Kara blinked back fresh tears. I'll miss you, baby sister. Maybe you'll come visit soon. I wouldn't miss that chance, Hope said, wiping the tears from Kara's cheeks. She turned to Elliot then and was back to business. Listen, I'm trusting you with my sister, and I don't do that with just anybody. He nodded. I understand, and I take that notion very seriously. He wasn't necessarily the best looking guy on the block and definitely not the coolest. But something about Elliot spoke of kindness, and Mallory believed what he said. After a final hug, 
Kara and Elliot left the bar, hand in hand. Hope stood there silently, seeming to contemplate what had just transpired. She looked lost, alone. You okay over there? Mallory asked after a few moments. Just so sudden, you know? Hope forced a smile, but it was less than convincing. Karen and I haven't been close for years, but it's still hard, you know, to see her go, even if it's for the best. And why is it for the best? Mallory asked, picking up on a piece of the puzzle that seemed to be missing. It's not important. And with that, Hope rounded the bar and went back to work, taking drink orders almost as if none of it had happened. A coping mechanism, Mallory decided. Yet it was the second time Hope had pushed her away, kept details of her life purposefully to herself. It stung a bit, but Mallory forced herself to move past it. She took a seat at the bar and stayed close, just in case Hope wanted to talk. If nothing else, she'd know Mallory was there. But it didn't seem to matter. Hope was closed off to her now, and kept her head down as she worked, limiting her interactions with the customers and with Mallory. Maybe Hope was the type who needed space when she was upset. Mallory had really no way of knowing. And while she still had a lot of questions about what had gone down here tonight, now was not the time. Chapter 12 the next morning started slowly for Mallory. For whatever reason, she struggled to keep her head in the game. A quick stop at Starbucks had gone horribly awry, as she'd been given an Americano for Evelyn, when all she really needed in life was a latte for Mallory. Apparently, Starbucks seemed to have a handle on the current state of her life, a mirroring effect that had her intrigued and a little frightened by Starbucks. Bam, big top art, Hunter said, sliding a series of mock-up ads onto Mallory's desk. I am a warrior of all things advertising. Don't tell me they're not brilliant because they are, so you'd be lying. Mallory glanced down at the array, and though she'd only had a moment to peruse them, Hunter seemed to have slayed the assignment. The ads were themed out according to various movie genres, and each was paired with a color scheme. They came with edgy slogans, too, handed to them by the big top boys, as they'd come to call them. Not your mom's movie theater, Sam read over her shoulder. I love that these guys are willing to slap that on an advertisement. Mallory nodded. They're all about in-your-face campaigns, which is probably good experience for us to acquire. Subtlety is not exactly a word in Timmy's vocabulary. At the mention of his name, Hunter and Samantha high-fived. It was a new office pastime. Brooklyn whirled around in her desk chair and faced the group. So what's the word on showplace? Any further talk about the deal between the two accounts? There has been movement, Mallory told her. Timmy wants Hope to create a specialty cocktail menu for them, and he plans to credit Showplace as the creators on all versions. In return, he also wants to hold Big Top's next movie premiere party for contest winners at Showplace. Is Hope thrilled? Brooklyn asked. She should be. This is pretty major. She doesn't exactly know yet. I tried to discuss it with her, but we were interrupted. Did you guys know she has a twin sister? One who's apparently in some kind of trouble and moving to Iowa? You just said a lot of things right there. Seriously, a twin? Hunter asked. She hasn't mentioned that. But it's also not like we've had drawn out discussions about our families either. But here's the thing, Mallory said, then remembered herself. I'm sorry. If you guys have work to do, we don't have to talk about this now. 
As if on cue, Hunter perched on the side of Mallory's desk. Samantha grabbed a chair and sat, and Brooklyn wheeled herself over. All blinked at her expectantly. Okay, I guess that answers that question. Go on, Samantha said. Spill. I feel a bit like things between Hope and me are spiraling. Spiraling can be good, Brooklyn said. You spiral her, she spirals you. Hunter pointed at Brooklyn. What she said. Mallory shook her head. You guys should go on tour. Hunter and Brooklyn high-fived, which she should have seen coming. You were saying? Sam asked, steadying the ship. I guess I'm admitting that I'm into hope, much more than I meant to be at this point. It's still so early between us, and now I feel like I'm spiraling. Out of control, Samantha said automatically. Mallory turned to face her, latching on to the sentiment. Yeah, I guess so. Sam took over. It makes sense. You care about hope, and that makes you vulnerable to her. Vulnerability takes away a certain amount of control, and we all know that you have to be in control, Hunter deadpanned, in order to exist on this earth, Brooklyn added, or the world will cease to turn, Sam said. Mallory stared at them. Okay, that may be a tad harsh. Mal, Hunter said. You choreograph our elevator rides based on who needs to get out first. Yeah, well, it saves time if you're standing in the right spot and can exit promptly. Hunter shook her head. Just proving my point right now. Mallory took a deep breath. Maybe that's it. The control thing. I don't know. What I do know is that she has a tendency to shut me out of certain parts of her life. And while I get it, it also makes me feel wildly out of control, her friend said in unison. Yeah, that. Hunter looked thoughtful. So you guys are getting kind of serious then. Mallory opened her mouth to respond, but Brooklyn beat her there. Fantastic sex has been had, glorious sex, more than once in a night sex. Mallory stared at Brooklyn, incredulous. You have no discretion, you know that? I don't when it comes to sexy stories. Shouldn't have to. There's been sex? Sam asked. Yes, Brooklyn told her. Sex has been had and good sex. More. I'm gonna need more, Sam said all dreamy-eyed. And more you shall have, Brooklyn told her. From what I can tell, Hope knows what she's doing in the bedroom, which, can I say, based on how she makes those drinks, has me not at all surprised. Mallory stared on in mystification. Do you even need me here? Of course we do, Brooklyn said, undeterred. It was a sleepover date, but Hope had to head into work the next morning, all tired and sexy from their ravenous night. Oh, she was, too, Mallory said, remembering the visual. Tired from all the ravenous. Hunter nodded her approval. Ravenous is hot. And then there was an up-against-the-wall goodbye kiss, all passionate and handsy. I love handsy, Sam sighed. Handsy is my favorite. Mallory balked at Brooklyn. I never said it was up against a wall. Was it? Brooklyn asked. Yeah, actually it was. Thank you, Brooklyn pressed on. She slid her hand into Mal's hair and owned her with that kiss. I'm pretty sure Mal owned her right back. I'm gonna need to splash some water on my face, Samantha said, fanning herself. Good call, Brooklyn said, joining in on the fanning. Suddenly, I'm intensely interested in planning my honeymoon, in detail. As the girls headed off in various directions, 
Mallory was left right back where she started, uncomfortable with where her heart was headed, as it seemed to have broken up with her head altogether. Which was tragic, as she happened to like her head. She depended on it, counted on it. Without control, without logic. Who was she? Two hours later, Mallory was in the midst of putting together a presentation for Foster Foods when her phone buzzed from where it sat on her desk. She froze when she saw her father's name on the readout, and a chill moved across her skin at the thought of speaking to him. The photo that stared up at her from her phone was of the two of them last Christmas Eve, laughing near the Christmas tree. How different that photo seemed to her now. Was he sleeping with his assistant then? When had it started? The questions that bubbled in succession propelled her into action, and she answered the damn phone. Hi, Dad, she said as neutrally as possible, keeping her blood pressure even and manageable. Hi, kiddo. How was your week? It was how he started most calls, with pleasantries that seemed so out of place now it was ridiculous. My week's been fine. What can I do for you? I was hoping we could have lunch. Talk. While she wanted nothing more than to hang up the phone and push the issue aside, the hurt that had grown harder and harder to ignore demanded her attention. And that meant she needed answers. Not only that, but she needed to look him in the face and tell him that what he was doing was wrong. When? I'm in court all next week, but the following Monday is open. Monday it is. It was understood that they'd meet at Adolfo's, half the distance between them at their standard noon meeting time. Great. See you then, sweetheart. Please don't call me that, she said, without even fully processing the sentence. It felt wrong now in light of everything. Yet saying that to him now felt just as bad. Very well. See you Monday. They said goodbye, and she clicked off the call with a sigh. Why did everything have to be so complicated? Mallory was used to order, to things leveling out, to calm efficiency. This week had been anything but. First, her father was a lying cheat, and then hot sex with Hope, followed by a total freeze-out after the sister drama, and now this lunch with her father. She fell back against her chair and studied the ceiling, because at least that wasn't falling in around her. Yet. Hope needed to put things right with Mallory, that much she knew. Kara's unexpected announcement the night prior had thrown her in a manner she hadn't been prepared for. In retrospect, it was fantastic news for Kara that she'd found someone who'd be there for her, who she genuinely loved and loved her back. It was even better news that she was getting out of New York City and away from scumbags like Dominic, who would only take her right back to where she'd started. However, arriving at that point had been a journey. Unfortunately, a journey Mallory had to watch play out in front of her. Hope had pushed her away in the midst of the emotional roller coaster. And while it had been for only a split second that she caught a glimpse of the herd in Mallory's eyes, it had been there. And hung over her still. She checked the clock. Mallory would still be at work, but maybe near the end of her day. She fired off a text as she walked from the bar to her office. We never got that business meeting. Then she waited, her nerves in overdrive. A few moments later, her phone buzzed. You are correct. When are you free? She smiled as she typed. Now, come by and be all businessy, please. It took longer for Mallory to answer this time, which had hope on edge. But when her phone finally buzzed, relief hit. You've twisted my arm, on my way. When Mallory knocked on the door to her office 15 minutes later, she looked. 
fantastic, in another of those incredible business suits. It was as if they'd been manufactured with the sole purpose of making her want to take them off, Mallory. This one was maroon and showed the lapels of a gray dress shirt underneath. And there were heels, which affected her on a whole separate level. Hey, Mallory said, her lips curved into a smile. How are you? Hope detected a hesitation in the way she spoke, which made sense given the last time they'd seen each other. But she wasn't unfriendly. I'm doing great. Better now that we get to have this super important meeting. Mallory inclined her head to the side. Are you making fun of our meeting? It's a serious meeting. I would never. But it's possible I called it as just a big excuse to get to see you. Something about the way Mallory was looking at her softened, and she took the opportunity to move in for a... Ah, ah, ah. This is a business meeting, Miss Sanders. Can't it be many things, though? A multifaceted business meeting? I'm just saying, let's think this through. Hope blinked at Mallory, offering her most innocent eyes. Don't give me that traitorous puppy dog look. Mallory shook her head. Doesn't work that way, champ. She sashayed to the desk, and the subtle back and forth of her hips had Hope captivated. Surely, they could work something out. You have the best walk, Spencer, as in A-plus on the walking. Mallory straightened. I'm detecting a distinct lack of focus. Negative, I'm highly focused. Let's redirect it to the laptop screen, where I have several mock-ups for you of this month's promotion. You might remember the ginger snap smash. Only vaguely at the moment. Mallory pressed on undeterred. I realize we're already partway into it, but getting some branding out there is a good idea. Get customers educated about the monthly specials and build buzz around what's coming next. Okay, that part she heard. I think that's a wise move. I vote yes. Mallory smiled. That's because you're a savvy business owner. Did you just claim me? Is there a savvy brand on the back of my shoulder? Why? Did you want there to be? The twinkle in Mallory's eye told Hope that all was well between them. And God, she wanted it to be. She dropped the flirtatious banter and met Mallory's eyes. I've missed you, she said sincerely. I saw you yesterday. Still. Mallory touched her cheek. I've missed you, too. A lot. Hope pulled her in and wrapped her arms around Mallory, then held her for a moment. When she released her, Mallory's arm still circled her neck. So, what happened yesterday? Mallory asked. I felt like you checked out on me after your sister left. Hope nodded. That's because I did. The thing is, I'm not used to this, to having someone else to consider. I think I might be bad at it. You kind of are. Hey! Hope said in mock offense. It's okay. I'm not sure I'm the best at it either. What makes you bad at it? Mallory looked skyward as if finding the right words. I think it's hard for me to let go, to let myself feel. When I do, it's like I'm in some sort of free fall without a net. You're scared of all of this. Even if Mallory hadn't nodded. Hope could already see the answer in her eyes. What a pair we are, Mallory said quietly. You're closed off, and I'm afraid to let go. I'm not sure there's hope. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm right here. Mallory regarded her in mystification. Did you just say something funny? Hope shrugged demurely. You did. You were just funny. 
hot bartender from Showplace has actual comedic chops. I like it when you call me hot bartender. Mallory shook her head, rejecting the notion. Please, everyone calls you that. I only like it from you. Hope leaned in for a kiss and was met with a soft finger to her lips instead. Business meeting, remember? Hope sighed. I do. You have a lot of rules, Park Avenue, and sometimes I think they exist just to torture me. They give me a framework from which to operate. Mallory disentangled herself from Hope and pointed at the screen. So, which one do you like best? Hope stared at the options, and what she saw was pretty awesome. These are great, Mallory. You really like them? I love them, she said, marveling. Mallory blew out a breath. For whatever reason, I was more nervous about showing you these mock-ups than I can remember being with a client in years. Really? It's only me, Hope said. It's stupid, isn't it? But I desperately want you to think we do good work. And I'm never nervous when it comes to business. Never. Well, I more than like them. And know without a doubt that you guys do excellent work. She gestured to the poster in the center of the screen. I'm drawn to this one most. The color scheme mirrors the colors of the bar. Mallory nodded, seemingly happy she'd zeroed in on that particular design. That one's Hunter's favorite as well. We just wanted to provide you with some alternate choices. This one is the definite winner. But is it possible to get the font bigger here? Hope asked, pointing to the word smash, so that the word pops out as if it's jumping from the page. Mallory laughed and typed the note into her phone. Smash should jump from the page, got it. Now let's talk about Big Top for a moment. Okay, let's, Hope said. Timmy wants you to consult on their seasonal cocktail menu, and he's willing to credit the bar. He also wants to hold his next movie premiere party here late next month. Hope couldn't believe what she was hearing. A complete no-brainer. This sort of relationship was exactly the kind of thing that could make a difference for a business like hers. Where do I sign? Mallory laughed. I take it that's a yes. I'll let Big Top know, and we can start scheduling meetings. Anything else we can do for you? Hope shook her head in wonder. You're kind of amazing, you know that? I can't believe you didn't lead with that news. Well, I didn't want to barrage you. Objectify, sure. Barrage, no. Mallory winked, closed the laptop, and placed it in her bag. I'll let Hunter know about your choice so she can finalize the artwork and start the printing process. She'll also begin some social media push about the promotion. Oh, and the budget allows us to purchase a little print space, so I'm perusing different options there. You're kind of a rock star at this, Hope told her. Ah, you noticed. Mallory headed for the door. Wait, you're leaving? This was bad, because she wanted Mallory to stay. Needed her to even if all they did was talk a little more. Mallory was like this breath of fresh air that made Hope forget about things like the bar's financial woes or the fact that her sister was leaving. When she was with Mallory, she could let all of the rest fall away. And here she was in such close proximity and effortlessly smoking at the same time. I have to go. More work to do. Hope nodded, the emptiness evident. Okay, I understand. With door in hand, Mallory turned back to her. But I would love if you came over later tonight. We can spend some one-on-one -on -one time together. Not a business meeting in sight. Mallory offered a smile, and Hope did a mental backflip. Is Eleven too late? 
It's not. See you then, hot bartender. Mallory held Hope tight as she brought her down from orgasm gently with her mouth. She moved up her body, kissing first her breast, then her collarbone and her throat. Finally, she found Hope's lips and kissed her long and hard, leaving her mouth swollen and perfect. Moments before, Hope had burst into wild shudders in her arms, and it had easily been one of her favorite visuals. Remember that control thing you have? Hope asked, recapturing her breath. Mallory nodded and smiled as she looked down at Hope. I think you like to practice it in the bedroom. A definite possibility. It felt good to take exactly what she wanted, and steadied her somehow to take the reins after such an off-kilter week. They were still new to each other, but she was learning Hope's body what she liked, where she was most sensitive. God, did she love each new discovery. Do you always wear matching underwear sets? Because I'm all in favor, Hope said, referencing Mallory's attire. While Hope was completely naked, Mallory had taken care of that. She still wore her burgundy and black combo, one of her favorite sets. I guess I do. Hope shook her head slowly. How am I going to survive you? She traced the outside of Hope's breast. I trust you'll find a way. I'm going to have to try. With that, Hope sent her hands down Mallory's back, down to her ass where she cupped it and pulled Mallory tight against her. Mallory gasped and closed her eyes at the onslaught of sensation the proximity evoked. She was beyond ready, and had been for some time already. Before she knew what hit her, Hope had her on her back, eyes flashing. Kind of proud of yourself right now, aren't you? Mallory asked, and nipped gently up at Hope's lips. Kinda am. Hope pulled the cups of her bra down, releasing her breasts in one motion. As she circled a nipple aggressively with her tongue, Mallory moaned quietly, too good not to. And then her bra was gone completely, and then her panties, which was good. At this point, she didn't need a pre-show. She rocked her hips against Hope's thigh, as the throbbing between her legs became nearly unbearable. She'd been turned on since she first touched Hope, and now her desire rested somewhere beyond calculation. Hope crawled down her body as Mallory sucked in much-needed air. The touch of Hope's tongue against her center was almost Mallory's undoing. Hope blew a breath over Mallory that shot her heart rate into the stratosphere. She moaned quietly because Hope's tongue was back, and God did it do things to her. Hope tasted, teased, and tormented Mallory until she'd balled the sheet in her fists and writhed in hot desperation beneath Hope's mouth. Her muscles quivered as the pressure continued to build. Hope entered her then, swift and sure, and the result had Mallory lurching from the bed as fireworks exploded behind her eyes in glorious release. Hope had an arm wrapped around Mallory's waist to hold her in place, all the while pumping harder, taking Mallory to heights she could scarcely fathom. She called out as one spasm shot into another and then another. She gave herself over to Hope fully, wondering if she knew what Mallory was feeling, which was entirely too much. In bed, they fit together perfectly, Mallory realized, still moving against Hope's hand. They had been explosive together once again. That was probably the sexiest experience of my life. Hope told her as she settled next to Mallory in bed. You do things to me that I still haven't quite figured out. We're pretty awesome in bed together. Yes, but I was talking about all of it. It was an honest admission, and there was nothing guarded or shielded in the way Hope looked at her now. This was the two of them, connecting openly and honestly. 
Every time the door to the bar opens, do you know I glance up to see if it might be you? You do? I didn't know that. Hope nodded and then covered her eyes. I can't believe I just admitted that. You probably think I'm super lame now. The lamest, Mallory said, grinning back at her. Except you're not. I like that you do that. My turn. Hope smiled at the game and propped her head up on her hand, listening. I wonder what you're doing a lot. So I figured out your schedule a bit, when you head to work and when you generally leave. That kind of makes me your own personal stalker, huh? I've never had one of those before. Mallory laughed. Please, you have like 18 at Showplace. They don't count. They don't, Mallory said, moving in for a long and languid kiss, finishing with, and they certainly don't get to do that. Hope blinked. I'm sorry. What did you say? My mind quit working there for a second as this hot, naked girl was making out with me. Your life is so hard, Mallory told her. A pause. How's your sister? At the question, uncertainty flashed on Hope's face, quickly replaced with resolve. She was trying, and the effort warmed Mallory. They've arrived in Iowa. Kara says she can't decide if it's like something out of a Lifetime movie or the Twilight Zone. Lots of farmland, small little stores, quaint little houses, and extra friendly people. It sounds kind of awesome. The Midwest has a charming culture. But she's doing okay? She sounds the happiest I've ever heard her. This was the right thing for her. She's a recovering addict, Mal, so she needed a change. Mallory nodded. It made a lot of sense, given what she'd seen of Kara. And Dominic. Who is he, exactly? Hope sighed. She clearly didn't want to go down this path, but Mallory felt it was important to push a little. Don't do that. Please don't pull away. Hope met her eyes. He's a lowlife Kara borrowed money from. Unfortunately, he's a powerful lowlife who didn't take too kindly to her wanting to sever ties, even after she paid the debt. That's why she needed to go. He was never going to give up. I don't even know what to say. Did you report him to the police? Hope smiled as if she'd said something cute. It doesn't really work that way with these kind of people. That can't be true. Trust me, Hope said. You take Dominic down, and a lackey's waiting to step up and seek revenge in his name. That sounds horrible. It has been. But she's out of the way now. And despite the fact that I'll miss her, this is her shot at a stable future, a real life. I'll visit her ten times a year if that's what it takes to keep her happy and grounded. You're a good sister. Those words seemed to resonate with Hope, and Mallory wondered if anyone had ever said them to Hope before. The thought made her heart reach out. She wanted Hope to know of all the amazing things about herself. She wanted to tell her and show her in every way she could. And she would. Sunlight streamed in from the floor-to-ceiling windows of Mallory's bedroom, and Hope blinked back against the light. Her limbs felt heavy, her body relaxed and boneless in the most wonderful way. She turned and found Mallory asleep next to her on her stomach. The sheet pulled back, revealing the smooth expanse of her back. She smiled and ran her hand down its length and finished with a soft kiss to her shoulder. Nothing. Mallory, she had found, was a very deep sleeper, in addition to being a bed hog. She took note of the fact that Mallory slept square in the center of the bed and would whether Hope was there or not. 
It was kind of endearing. She decided to let Mallory sleep and would go about making some coffee for them and possibly seeking out breakfast. Bagels are here, a voice called from the living room. And that's when a stocky dog with short little legs pushed open the door to the bedroom and regarded her with adorable brown eyes. Whoa, an interesting development indeed. Hello, strange dog, Hope said quietly. The new arrival licked her hand and took a seat as if she knew the place well. Curious, Hope slipped into her jeans and pulled on a t-shirt of Mallory's. Mal, she whispered. Hey, sleepyhead, I think you have a guest. Make that two. The dog wagged his tail. Mallory's only response was to curl onto her side and pull the sheet tighter around her waist. Adorable. Well, okay. Looked like she was on her own. After running her fingers through her hair to tame it, she peeked around the corner, relaxing at the sight of Hunter, rummaging through Mallory's fridge. Mallory's asleep, she said by way of greeting. Hunter straightened and turned. She paused a moment before breaking into a lazy smile. Well, look who's here. Hope shrugged one shoulder and slid onto a bar stool at the island. It was a long walk back to my place. Oh, of course it was, Hunter said overly sympathetic. You had no other option than to see if Mal would take you in. Actually, she invited me over herself. Hunter studied her. So are you guys turning into a real thing and not just a fun thing? To hope it wasn't even a question. While I'm having a great time, I'm not in this for fun. Okay, Hunter looked as if she was gathering her thoughts. I like you guys together, I do. And here it came. But? Tell me what you like about her. Seriously? Hope asked with a smile. Are you planning to write down my answers? But Hunter wasn't smiling, and Hope knew it was important for Hunter to know that her feelings were honorable. Thereby, she sobered quite a bit and spoke from her heart. She's quirky, without realizing she's quirky. That whole organize the world thing is not only admirable, but enjoyable because she can't not do it. That's true. She can't stop herself, Hunter said. Good call. What else? Well, beyond the fact that I'm ridiculously attracted to her, I love how spoiled she is, while at the same time generous beyond all measure. Then the myriad of smiles. She has her on smile, which she reserves for business or polite conversation. And then there's her dreamy smile, when she's in her own head and thinks no one's watching. Hunter smiled. That's a good one. I like that smile. But my favorite is the one she reserves for genuine happiness. It's my goal to see that smile as much as possible. Should I go on? Because I can. I like her relationship with you guys, her accomplishments, her drive, her humor. Hunter held up a hand. I think I got it. Good. Because those things are important to me. Hope said. Hunter inclined her head to the side. I believe you, but I need to say this anyway. You can't hurt her, do you understand? Because she may seem tough and together and like she can handle anything, but underneath all of that is a girl who's a lot more vulnerable than she seems. Hope nodded. Mallory was one of Hunter's best friends and she was looking out for her. Do you honestly think I'd be reckless when it comes to Mallory? No, I don't. But I need you to understand that I will hunt you down if you are. Hope smiled. Got it. You have my word. She peered around Hunter. 
Should I make up something to threaten you about? Or did I hear you say bagels earlier? Hunter grinned at Hope and reached for the white bag on the counter, just as the door to the loft slid open. Donuts are here, Sam called. Fantastic donuts have long at last arrived for humans to consume. Oh, hello there, Samantha said, freezing and regarding Hope. Then she exchanged a knowing smile with Hunter. Hi, Hope said back. You guys deliver bagels and donuts? That's kind of great service. Sam nodded. Hunter's barbaric and prefers bagels. I'm sensible and thereby understand that donuts make the world go round. Hunter held up a finger. I love donuts too, always have. But you think bagels are better, which is insane. I do champion the bagel, in a full-on baked goods war. Sam held a hand out in the air in punctuation. Do you see? She asked Hope. I do. Outrageous. Hope enjoyed the playful banter that highlighted the differences between Samantha and Hunter. While Hunter was very go with the flow, Samantha seemed to be a lot more structured in her approach to life. Hope could tell that much simply from the way they ordered their drinks. It intrigued her, the way people paired up, what drew one human to another, which naturally had her thinking about herself and Mallory, who would surely be waking up any minute, right? Was it odd that she already missed her? Should she alert her that her friends had arrived? Sorry about busting in on you, Hunter said. We didn't know Mal had company. Is this a regular Saturday morning occurrence? She asked in amusement. Sam tilted her head from side to side in consideration. Pretty much. Sometimes Mal busts in on us, but I'd say we generally do more of the busting. Wedding plans are exhausting, a voice said from the doorway. Hope looked up to find Brooklyn entering with a bottle of champagne. Mal has orange juice, yeah? In the fridge, Hunter supplied. She has pulp and no pulp. Mal likes to cover her bases, Brooklyn said, then paused mid-step, her girlfriend nearly colliding into her. Hope. What an amazing surprise to find you here. In the morning, no less. Hope didn't know where to go with that, so she smiled sheepishly instead. Good to see you, Brooklyn. Mimosas all around? Jessica asked. She scanned the room. Where's Mallory? Late to the party, apparently, Mallory said, taking in the room from the bedroom door with the dog at her feet. She wore a white t-shirt and gray sweatpants. Hope couldn't help admire how they clung low to her waist. You sleep a few extra minutes and the cavalry rides in. Hiya, Mal, Sam said, presenting a newly assembled plate of donuts. Hungry? We also have bagels, Hunter said, winking. Not the bagel versus donuts showdown. Mallory said and stole a glazed donut with chocolate frosting. Sam shot up a hand in victory, and in adorable response, Hunter stole a kiss. Fine, Hunter said, holding Sam's face in one hand. Donuts one, bagels zero. As the group chattered animatedly, Mallory made her way to Hope and handed her a tear-off of the donut. Good morning she said quietly. Good morning back, Hope said, her volume just as low. Their eyes met and held in one of those private exchanges where a lot passed between them without a single word spoken. She loved having that kind of connection, the kind you didn't even have to work hard for. It was just there. Mallory then tucked a strand of hair behind Hope's ear. You okay with this? The Saturday morning barrage? I probably should have warned you this could happen. Shocking at first, but now I think it's fun, 
she told Mallory. No one shows up unannounced at my place with dogs and breakfast, and I keep waiting for them to. Mallory laughed. Thank you for seeing the silver lining. Also, I love you in my shirt, so I might need to make out with you later. Hope looked skyward. I mean, I might be free for that. Busy schedule, you know. Mallory gasped and passed her a smile, the very smile Hope had just told Hunter about, the one that melted her heart from the inside out. As Mallory's friends prepared plates and drinks, Jessica and Brooklyn regaled the group with war stories from the wedding planning trenches. They heard about photographer interviews, wedding cake tastings, videographer meetings, and colors for flowers. If you pushed aside how exhausting the whole thing seemed, underneath it all was a thick layer of romance that had Hope smiling. She'd been to exactly two weddings in her life, but found the whole concept kind of awesome. Two people swearing in front of the world that they want only each other, forever. That took some kind of confidence. Looking at Brooklyn and Jessica now, it was clear that they knew what they had and didn't intend to let it go. She wondered if she'd ever make such a public commitment. She glanced at Mallory, and her heart squeezed in that warm, wonderful way. There had to be something to that squeeze, right? It wasn't a squeeze for nothing. Maybe one day. I just don't know what I'm going to do if it rains, Brooklyn said. I have all these images in my head of a drowned rat version of myself pouting in all of the photos, and no one likes a pouty bride. I don't. Jessica took her hand and kissed the back of it. If it rains, she said calmly, you and I will have the best possible time in that rain. It will be the most fun any two people have ever had at a rainy wedding. And we will tell the story of that rainy, romantic wedding to our kids one day, and they will love it. Samantha pointed at Jessica. Now that was a good answer. Brooklyn seemed to think so, too, as she was staring at Jessica with a dreamy, faraway look in her eye. I'm suddenly not so worried about rain anymore, Brooklyn said. How do you do that? And I also have a ton of work to do, so we better head home, now. Samantha leaned in to Hope. That's code for sex. Got it, Hope said, laughing and taking mental notes. They were a fast-paced group, with their own shorthand but a lot of fun at the same time. We should get going too, Hunter said. Get out of these guys' hair. And with a swift cleanup of the kitchen, the four friends were gone just as quickly as they'd arrived. Hope turned back to Mallory, who was nestled on the sofa. Wow. She shook her head and smiled. They're a handful, but they're my family. Well, you should consider yourself very, very lucky. I do. And I'm not lying about how good you look in my shirt. I kind of think you look good out of it, too. It's hard to say which is better. Hope didn't need any more prompting. She slowly pulled the t-shirt up and off and inclined her head to the side. I figured you needed all the information. Mallory was up and moving toward her before she even finished the sentence. It turned out she really, really loved Saturday mornings at Mallory's. Chapter 13 Sam, how are we coming with the vendor negotiations on that new hosting company? Mallory asked. We're close, but not close enough. Why? Because Foster is having sight problems again, and I swear we need a new provider. Sam swiveled back to her computer. Let me see if I can speed things up a bit, work my mojo. I'm counting on it, Mallory told her. 
Hunter, any movement on the Serenity ad for July? Hunter slid off the kitchen counter. I emailed the final product to you an hour ago. My bad, I haven't had a second to even check. She turned to Brooklyn, who was staring at the wall, meaning she was in creative mode. Brooks, I don't want to interrupt, but where are you with Foster's cereal line? I'm staring at the wall, Mal. I'm working on it. Mallory knew when to be patient. That's exactly what I was hoping for. But is it at all possible to stare at the wall just a tad bit faster? That earned her a glare from Brooklyn. Or not. You know, take your time. It was late Friday morning, and Mallory felt like she'd been going 60 miles an hour for the past three days. She'd yet to watch a television show, go running, eat a meal uninterrupted, and what was worse, lay eyes on hope for three days. Sometimes when it rained at Savvy, it poured. Unfortunately, it usually fell to Mallory to pick up the slack. True, she could ask for more help from her friends, but they were working hard as it was. Sometimes, though, it felt a little like they went home to their own lives at the end of the day, and she stayed back to live and breathe savvy 24-7. She didn't begrudge them the work. In fact, she loved it. But at times she wondered what it would be like to leave work at work, too. Her cell phone, which she'd turned face down on her desk to avoid distraction, buzzed against the hard surface. She flipped it over in case it was a pressing client concern, surprised and a little happy to see the incoming call was from Hope. She should let the call roll over and focus on her afternoon. She should. Good business owners did that. Mallory, however, was apparently on board with going to corporate hell and thereby slid her thumb across the screen and accepted the call, that already had her stomach tightening. What are you doing? Hope asked immediately. Mallory smiled against the phone, as the sound of Hope's voice had a way of transporting her to someplace lighter. Just hearing the question had the world slowing down for her. I'm about to spend an hour returning email. What are you doing? Waiting for you. Mallory paused. Waiting for me for what? to play hooky and spend the afternoon with me somewhere fun. While that sounds amazing, I can't just skip out on work. Yes, you can. Mallory stared at the ridiculous to-do list open on her desk. That's impossible. We're already running behind on several deadlines. You need a break, Hope said with authority. Whatever you're late on, we'll still be late tomorrow morning, right? It will be later, and the world will still turn. Come out and play, Park Avenue. It'll be a time. Mallory took a deep breath and stared at the ceiling, now tempted in a way she never thought possible. She'd never played hooky from work. Hell, she came in when she was sick. Was she actually capable of this kind of corporate debauchery? Would she still be allowed in restaurants? Would people judge her on the streets? With her heart thudding away, she made an important decision. When and where? Thirty minutes and a quick change later, Mallory spotted Hope right where she said she would be, in front of the Central Park Zoo. Hope stood as she approached and beamed at her, pulling her into her arms in an embrace that Mallory relished. She loved the way Hope smelled. She didn't know if it was her cotton laundry detergent, or the faint scent of citrus from her shampoo, or everything wrapped into one. But it reminded her of a breezy summer day, much like this one. So, hi, she said to Hope, releasing her but still keeping her hands at Hope's waist, and drowning a moment in those baby blue eyes. Three days was too long. Too damn long. That's when panic set in again, when she remembered what she was doing here. 
You should know that this is not at all like me, and that I'm a little terrified right now. Hope nodded. I kind of thought you might be. But here's the thing. You need to give yourself a break on occasion. Not every week, but once in a great while, it's called for. There's just so much to... Hope touched her chin and gave the tiniest shake. And you'll get it all done. You might even do a better job if you allow yourself a chance to recharge and come back refreshed and ready to take on the world. Plus, I've never been to this zoo, and I wanted my favorite person with me to explore. So, I'm your new favorite person? Hope placed a soft kiss on her cheek. Did I forget to mention that? Because you are. You're a variety of favorites for me lately. Mallory smiled at Hope, grounded once again, and gazed at the entrance. The line to get in made up of families, tourists, and couples. We used to come here when we were kids. I haven't been back in years, though. Let me ask you, why the zoo? Hope gestured to the sky. Well, have you seen today? It's beyond gorgeous. I work in a bar, so seeking out the sunlight is a must. Much the way it should be for you. Plus, something about the zoo says recreation. It's hard to think about external struggles when there's a baby goat cavorting in front of you. Hope had a valid point, and suddenly Mallory couldn't wait for the distraction. Oh, take me to these baby goats. Gladly. And not only did they see the adorable goats, but mountain lions, snow monkeys, red pandas, and more. But Mallory's favorite by far and away were the sea lions. Do you see his little face? Hope asked, inclining her head. I'd have to give him anything he wants. Five fish? Fine. Eight? Okay. They'd covered the zoo in its entirety, but had circled back to Sea Lion Park in the center to spend a little more time with the cute rascals. Mallory handed her box of popcorn to Hope. They love the sun. Just look at them. I feel like they'd sun themselves on that rock all day. Hope nodded. These sea lions don't mess around. Well, why would they? They are city sea lions. That got a laugh. I forget that we're still in Manhattan. It feels so removed here. Mallory nodded. Right? It sort of puts everything in perspective, though. In the middle of all the hubbub, gridlock, and foot traffic, these guys just want to take a nap in the sun and a dip in their pool. Maybe snack on some fish later. Hope looked at Mallory pointedly. You could take a page from their book, you know. Mallory shot her a look. Are you judging me right now? Nope. I would never, especially if it means I don't get to put my hands on you later, because you're wildly attractive to me right now, all relaxed and happy. Mallory met Hope's eyes. They sparkled, and Mallory swallowed against the rush they gave her. There might be some action later, but I'm not committing. It's not like I'm easy. Trust me when I say nothing about you is easy, which is why you're awesome. Good save. Thank you. But seriously, Mal, you need to cut yourself some slack now and again. Loosen up and live a little more. She nodded. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but you're probably right. Thank you for today. I feel, I don't know, like a human being again. I'll have to pick up some pieces tomorrow, but it will have been worth it. I love that you feel that way. I was afraid you'd hate me for dragging you away. Not a chance. Now, take a photo with me. Mallory moved around behind Hope and rested her chin on Hope's shoulder as they smiled at Mallory's phone. The resulting photo was a keeper, she thought to herself.
a reminder of how wonderful one afternoon could be. You want to grab a beer at one of those outdoor cafes outside the park? Alcohol at two on a workday? I don't think I'm allowed until after five. There's got to be some kind of law. Hope looked skyward and paused, eyes closed. I just checked, and you are. It's amazing. Let's go. Mallory laughed as Hope tugged her arm. How did I get mixed up with you? I don't know, but it's kind of awesome. It is, Mallory said. They paused outside the zoo and shared a kiss. A sweet, simple kiss that felt much like the afternoon. Something to remember. So, we have a problem, Teddy said as Hope rounded the bar the following Sunday morning. She picked up a clipboard and surveyed the day's work schedule. Four scheduled waitstaff should be plenty for a Sunday. She might even need to cut one early. Is it the grocery order? She asked Teddy. Don't worry about it. I didn't get it in on time on Friday, but Sal promised he'd put a rush on it. Instead of morning, we'll take a late afternoon delivery. Teddy's face didn't relax the way Hope expected it to. Not the grocery order. Okay, she didn't like the way he was looking at her. She set down the clipboard. What's going on? He glanced to his right at the maintenance guy she'd contracted to take a look at the blinking light fixture and dropped his voice. Can we maybe take this in your office? Sure. She followed him there, struggling to predict what was about to come her way. Teddy was the consummate calming force of the place. If something had him this concerned, it was bad. She closed the door behind them. Give it to me. The night deposit is gone. She paused. The sentence didn't compute. Explain gone? You were out last night, so I did just as I always do when I fill in. I moved the cash from the register to the deposit bag in your desk. When I came back later, the money was gone. The bag was empty. She stared at him. The bag had Friday night's take, too. What? She shook her head. She'd stayed with Mallory on Friday night and had planned to deposit both nights together. I never made it to the bank. Shit. Damn right shit, Teddy. You should have called me. He ran a hand through his hair. I was hoping to figure it out before I had to. This isn't the kind of thing I wanted to admit happened on my watch. He continued to babble on, to apologize and make excuses. But she'd stopped listening because she couldn't afford to lose two nights of cash like that. She was already behind after the draw she'd made to help Kara. Wait. She paused as a memory sparked. When she'd counted out the money for Kara, She'd left the rest of it in a locked box in her drawer, one down from the drawer containing the deposit bag. Not her most responsible move, but it was too late now. The box had been locked, and so had the drawer. But the thought that it might have been lifted, too, made her sick to her stomach. As Teddy talked, Hope tried the drawer and cringed when it opened without resistance. No box. Her eyes slammed shut at the sight, and her heart jumped into her throat. Christ. I know. I'm sorry, Hope, Teddy said. Who was in here? She demanded, standing. He held up his hands. As far as I know, just me. Unless you took the money, someone else was here. Right, right, I know that. She'd never seen him look that way, gray and wide-eyed. She took a moment and remembered herself. Teddy was a good guy, and good at his job. Hey, she said, snagging his focus. I didn't say this was your fault. He nodded. I know, it's just fucked up, and I'm sorry. Me too. 
They took a moment, each lost in their own thoughts. Maybe you should check on that maintenance guy. Give me a few minutes to think. Once she was alone, Hope sank into her desk chair and tried to assemble the pieces, to find a way to make it all make sense. What was she going to do? It had been tight enough before all this, but with the loss of that cash, the bar couldn't make next month's rent. There'd be no way, and all her backup cash was now gone, so... If there was ever a moment to cry, this would have been it. Fortunately, Hope wasn't built that way. She swallowed back the urge to knock everything off her desk and stared at 